to perform lock switch which is switching the lock file to one to other one when lock switch file happens then the current just current one current read lock file status will be changed to active stage what do we mean by active the information that is available in the just current read lock file is required for recovery because log writer writes more often than db writer writes so these change vectors are required in case of instance crash from here it is going to build dbf files that is where eventually it is supposed to be so now what is our understanding while log writer writing to a read log file that status we call it's current once information is full if one read log file gets full then log switch will happen automatically the status of current will be changed to active it will stay in active state till the information from database buffer cache see this is what happens when log switch happens checkpoint will happen checkpoint will call db writer to write all the information from database buffer cache to dbf files to make it permanent till that time the status of the first read log file is going to be inactive once that is done automatically the status will become inactive what do we mean by inactive inactive means it's ready to be current so now log switch happened the second file start taking the information once this second file is full it has to again log switch happen when log switch happens it comes to read log file 1 log switch can happen only the first file status is in inactive state so let's quickly look at that while writing current state when that is filled log switch happens the status will be changed to active when log switch happen checkpoint occurs checkpoint is again it's a background process checkpoint will call db writer db writer writes all the information from database buffer cache to dbf files then the status will be changed back, back to inactive then it start writing to the second file once second file is full then again log switch should happen log switch can happen only when the first file status is in inactive state that's how log writer is going to manage and maintain all the change vectors from read to buffers to read to log files now we know why we need minimum two read to log files why do we need two minimum read to log files in order to support the log switch mechanism so that that is very very critical log switch should happen because unless log switch can happen smoothly database cannot function properly why because all the changes dml or ddl changes must be logged in to read buffers from read buffers to read log files that's what little bit about log writer now when this log writer is going to write the information every time when we make the changes permanent when you update something when you say commit then the information will be written back to the read log files that is how oracle promises all the committed transactions are guaranteed how come because that is available on file system there is a multiplexing methodology what oracle really recommends to support these critical files by having copies of the same every 3 seconds log writer will get invoked and then it will write the information to read log files when log writer gets 1/3 full then log writer comes into the picture writes the information 
when the change records reaches worth of 1 MB, then log writer comes into the picture, writes information. Is that a beautiful mechanism? And everything is happening on a fast device which is memory and every so often this is being flushed out to the physical file system to make it permanent and to save it safely. That's the mechanism followed for all the memory structures to physical files. Now, at high level, what contains change vectors? The details about the change. What is the SCN number? What is the transaction ID? If we have committed it, what are the commit details? And type of operation, insert, update, delete. And which segment this belongs to? Is it a table? Is it index? What type of segment this? And what are all the changes? Change details. The entire change information is part of the change vector. So that in case of recovery, this information can be utilized to rebuild all the transactions. As name says, these are our redo log files. This information will be saved into redo log files. Now the most critical and interesting background process is checkpoint. Checkpoint, remember, checkpoint will never write any information from any memory structures. When checkpoint occurs, one example, when checkpoint occurs, as we discussed just now, anytime there is a lock switch, checkpoint occurs. Now, when checkpoint occurs, checkpoint is going to call DB writer. DB writer comes in action and it's going to write LRU, which is least recently used, including most recently used to appropriate data files. Once writing everything and checkpoint is going to mark control file with checkpoint information. That's the first important file. Control file will get updated by checkpoint process. With what information? Checkpoint information. Then checkpoint is going to stamp data file headers with appropriate checkpoint number. That second one. Third file is read lock files. Read lock files will get updated up to what extent the information is being saved from buffer cache to physical files. What does that mean? In case of recovery, recovery must start from last checkpoint. That's all. Because up to last checkpoint, the information is being saved from memory to physical files. So, any recovery is required that must be started from last checkpoint. So, checkpoint is going to support or minimize recovery time. That is one quality. Checkpoint is a very critical background process to reduce the instance or media recovery time. Because recovery must start from last checkpoint only. Now, remember, checkpoint won't write any data. But only ensures marking this SCN number. So, this is what we were talking about it. This SCN number in that situation we call that checkpoint number. Where? In read log files, control files and data files. So, during checkpoint, DB writer is responsible for writing all the information from buffer cache to physical files to make it permanent and tell to the system, hey, I have done writing up to this extent. So, checkpoint ensures all the dirty buffers, not just a LRU. That's the difference between DB writer writing when checkpoint occurred, DB writer writing when there is no checkpoint. So, if just DB writer coming into the picture, it's writing LRU. When checkpoint occurring, DB writer comes into the picture, it's going to write LRU as well as MRU, most recently used ones also, because that must be saved to disk too. Checkpoint position is the oldest dirty buffers in the database buffer cache. Isn't it? Up to that point, information is being written. Anything is happening after that requires recovery in case of crash. Thank you very much. Meet you in next session. Bye now.